In this project, we will numerically simulate the brake disc system conduction heat transfer. Brake is among the most widespread units with the non-stationary friction. We use braking friction system for damping the kinetic energy of the rotational or translational motion of the masses by friction forces. By braking, one can decrease the velocity of the relative sliding to zero or to the given value. In the course of operation of braking units, parameters like velocity, temperature, friction varying characteristics of material vary great greatly. In this project, the heat conduction of a brake disc system is modeled and simulated in ANSYS-1 software. The disc revolves with a speed of 20 radian per second and a braking pad is set to make contact with the disc. This frictional contact will result in heat generation inside the disc and the pad. The heat produced in the contact region will be dissipated based on the heat conduction formula. Energy and laminar model is activated. Also. MRF model is activated to model the rotational motion of the disk. A UDF is implemented to account for the radial heat flux. The model geometry for this simulation consists of a brake disk and a pad on a fluid flow domain. The geometry is designed in Gambit software. Also the geometry is meshed inside Gambit software and the mesh type used for this geometry consists of both type of a structured and, a stru un and unstructured mesh. And the element number is 198,594. Under the general setup tab, you can see different buttons from scales to units. By clicking on the scale, a new window will appear showing you the dominant extents of your geometry. Also, under the view length, view length unit section, you can see the default geometry units, which is meter in this project. Also, under the scaling section, uh, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeters. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. By clicking on check button, uh, you will see that under the console tab, the Fluid software will start to check your mesh for any errors. Uh, also by clicking on report quality, again in the console tab, the Fluid software will, uh, will give you the quality report for your mesh. For example, you can see the maximum aspect ratio of your mesh, uh, maximum orthogonal quality, and etc. By clicking on display button, a new window will appear which you can see different part, parts of your geometry. Now in the appear window which shows you the names of the different parts of your geometry, you can click and select each part and then click on display uh, so that the software will show you that part. Now there are several assumptions taken into account in this project. The first one is that the type of our solver is set to be pressure based since we are dealing with incompressible flows. Also as for the velocity formulation we have taken the absolute formulation for this. And as for the time study we have selected the steady time study since we didn't want our results to be a function of time. As you can see after double clicking on the energy button in the appeared box we have enabled the energy equation since we want to uh, account for the dist for the temperature changes in our computational domain after double clicking on the viscous model in the appeared window you can see that we have selected the laminar since our fluid flow entering our computational domain does not have a high Reynolds number and therefore they are not in a turbulent state after expanding the solid under the material section, you can see that two materials of aluminum and steel have been defined. Now, the material of steel has been defined in this project in order to apply it to the bread disc. Also, in order to add a new material, all you have to do is to right click on solid and then select new. After that, in the appear window, you either can define a new material by defining its properties yourself, or you can just Click on Fluent Database and select a new material from the list of material available in the Fluent software.
After clicking on the pad boundary and then clicking on edit in the period window under the thermal tab, you can see that the thermal condition of heat flux has been defined. Also in front of the heat flux section, you can see that a UDF wall condition uh, has been applied. You can buy this learning product to obtain a geometry file, mesh file and a comprehensive training video on how to set up, meaning the pre-processing, solution, processing and extracting results, which is the post-processing and analysis. And now in this slide you can see the temperature distribution in our computational domain and on our uh, break disk system. You can obviously see the temperature has increased on the break disk because of the friction. Here you can see the changes of the surface heat transfer coefficient for this brake pad. Now here you can easily see the airflow streams entering the computational domain and how they uh, cool down the brake disk system after uh, gaining temperature because of the frictional brake. To benefit from Mr. CFT services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at mrcft.com.